today, our plan is to get the boat ready and get everything put back where it goes. So I'm going to go back to shore and pick up our bikes that we've left there. That way we don't have to do that anymore. And then we'll get everything on the boat, put where it belongs, and get it ready for the ocean. Our little egg cooker to hard boil some eggs because when you are out at sea one of the easiest snacks to eat is an egg when it's hard boiled and this way with this little egg cooker thing we can make 10 at a time yeah so once I get it up here next to us then I can untangle all this chain thing is like a death star of anchors and chains all hooked together. Like right there you can see the flukes of a fortress. There's a shank of a small fortress. It's pretty much a collection of fortress anchors. And our chain is wrapped in this. So I'm going to untangle our chain and free us. That way we can keep our anchor and not lose it to this thing. that we're actually pulling on the anchor. So I'm thinking, wow, it must be really soft mud. The chain sunk down really far, that's why. So I'm on the windlass in low gear and I end up pulling up this. So we pull this up and our chain is all wrapped around this. And a bunch of well, our friends, Jessica and Ryan, said they didn't want to anchor here because they read about people getting their anchors hooked on old chains and stuff and having to get them cut. And this thing is like the death ball of anchors and chain. So our chain was all wrapped around it. Uh, being how we had like 150 feet of chain leading from this off and a $700 anchor down there, challenge accepted. So we pulled it up and I unraveled the chain and now we're going to return this back to its watery grave. As for why we're not taking this somewhere and dumping it in a responsible manner, how are we going to transport this and where on earth are we going to put it? So we're just going to drop it back there and never anchor here again. If you ever come to Charleston, do not anchor directly across from the city marina. You might find this guy. You've been warned. Don't grab this guy anymore. <laughs>
That was not the morning we anticipated, but we are finally underway. Bye, Charleston. And we got to see a beautiful sunrise. Right now we're leaving Charleston Harbor with the current as it's going out. So it's pretty funny because we're doing six knots over ground, but the bubbles are hardly moving. We'll make it out to the ocean before the tides change, we'll be dumped out with the tide, and then once we get out there we'll just sit and wait for the winds to come. First day's a slow one, that's for sure. Yep. We'll be going one knot. Most all day. of the day, yeah. The forecast for today is no wind, then rain, then wind and rain, then just wind. And a lot of it. So rather than reefing and trying to figure out how much reef we should have, we just put up the storm trysail. That way, if it's really bad, we have it set. And I don't have to come out in the rain to set anything. So while it's nice and warm and dry and calm, we got all the storm sails set. And we didn't even lose a knot. Yeah. Honestly, we're not sailing. We're just floating with the current current. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, but we are finally back out into the ocean and sailing. Uh, there's a storm approaching and we're gonna ride that cold front straight down as far south as we can get. I'm just going to stay inside, stay dry, and I spin the GPS around so I can keep an eye on it and then I have Navionics on my phone so I can make sure we're on the right track and keep a watch from inside our Dodger. It's, it's really good to be back out here again. <laughs> We are currently doing eight knots and we're absolutely flying. Herbie's out there uh, steering. I can't believe that this is normal for some people. Because <laughs> uh, for us it feels like we're just we're flying. <laughs> it's exciting because it's the fastest we've gone in a really long time and it feels like we're actually getting somewhere. Especially after that really slow start. It's nice to feel like we're making some quick miles. This is the real reason why we love our monitor wind vane. So we get the helm balanced and then we turn her on and that's it. We can let go of the helm and she will steer us on that wind angle perfectly. So right now we're doing between six and seven knots pretty much all the time. And I get to come inside, lay down with my lee cloth, which I have here, and 
that's it. So I'm in the C berth, Maddie's up in the V berth, and we can just relax. And every so often I go outside, take a look around. We have the uh, proximity alarm set on our AIS, so if someone is going to be within two miles of us, it lets us know. And then we can, you know, avoid that little incident. I have uh, Navionics on the iPad so I can make sure that we're still on course and that we're not going to run into any buoys. And Wendy just steers us beautifully. like getting places at 5 a.m. Yes, very much. So we left I don't even Charleston know. at 7.30 two days, uh, two days ago or somewhere on there. Yesterday? No, it was two days. I'm so confused. Yeah. One day and 21 hours ago and we've arrived now. So we left Charleston on Sunday. It doesn't matter. We left Charleston two days ago. We left Charleston two days ago, and we've arrived here at 5 a.m. in Florida. We're in Florida. Yes. Woo! We made it. We're in Florida. And we had our best average speed ever. Because we were riding ever. a cold front. Yeah, so we hopped out of, of Charleston before cold front came in, and then waited with our storm sails, and then when it hit, we went so fast, our entire journey averaged 3.9 knots. And that included an entire day of sitting, waiting for the cold front to arrive. So it really kind of, we really averaged more like 6 knots. Yeah. It and was then cool. We had a couple times where we were doing 10 knots, and we were moving really fast. So, now we're here. Sleep. And now I go to sleep, because I've been 
awake. It's all been Herbie. Yeah. I've been sick the whole time. Yeah. But you didn't throw up. I didn't throw up. Yeah. These are little guava filled pastries. They're so good. Thank you very much for the comments and the suggestions because it went from a nasty nasty thing to actual bread. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!